and also enemy images. And this is kind of the you can set what scene you want the view to visualize. Now this can be you to have the paddle and you just hit the ball and try to break the bricks. So this number function is going to first of all disable everything in the scene. So the enlargement and the movement work for it. In terms of how much health the enemies have and how many of them. Hello everyone, my name is Abdullah Agazada. I'm a software engineer at DCS Corp. And in this tutorial video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to use C++ and Q to create games. Now there's quite a few tutorials in this uh, video tutorial series. But don't worry, you only have to watch the first eight in order to be able to start creating your own games. The reason for that is because the first eight tutorials teach you all the fundamental things that all games will have to do. So the topics of the first eight tutorials include graphics, how to draw shapes and images onto the screen, sound, how to play music and sound effects, uh, movement, how to move objects around, uh, user input, so how to respond to when the user uh, touches the keyboard or, or the mouse, and uh, timing, how to do things at certain times and at certain intervals. So if the first eight tutorials cover all of that, then what are the remaining tutorials for? Well, the remaining tutorials are simply um, just us walking through a bunch of game examples made in Qt. The first game example that we're going to work on is a tower defense game, a very simple tower defense game. The second game example that we're going to be working on is a turn-based board game. And the third example game that we're going to be working on is a top-down role-playing game. So this third game is a little bit more complex. It has uh, characters, NPCs, quests, uh, items, abilities, anything that you would expect in a role-playing game. And um, because it's a little bit more complex, we're going to actually implement this third game in a game engine that I wrote myself on top of Qt. So here's what I recommend. If you're a very experienced programmer, then I recommend that you only watch about the first eight tutorials um, and then you should be able to create your own games from then on. Now, if you're also interested in using my game engine, then I recommend that you go ahead and watch from tutorial 36 and on. If you're a not so experienced programmer, um, then obviously I recommend that you try to watch as many of the videos as you have time for. Because by watching all those game examples, by going through creating those game examples, you're gonna be learning a lot about how to think through and solve commonly encountered programming problems. While watching this tutorial series, if at any time you have a question or you need a clarification, um, please feel free to go ahead and um, post the question as a comment. I'm usually very um, prompt and uh, generally pretty helpful with my responses. So um, don't be shy or anything about that. I, I'm more than glad to help out. Thank you so much for watching this introductory video. I hope that you'll also take the time and watch the actual tutorial videos. Um, Thanks again, and I hope to see you guys in the first tutorial. Bye-bye.